Oh, yes. Yes. That's me. I like to wear paper things. When I make things out of paper, uh, they end up on my head. So <laughs> This happens a lot. We're going to do two things today. We're going to talk about geometric patterns in folding. And then we're also going to do a hands-on workshop where we're going to fold some things. Um, and I have a lot of examples to share with you, both photos and actual folded things, which I'm going to pass around. Uh, my only request is that, uh, that you not have cups of tea or things on the table when you're passing around these works, because that would make me sad <laughs> if they get covered in tea. Yeah, that, that would be a bad thing. So uh, I have a lot of slides to go through, so we'll go through these uh, to, to discuss. Um, so a little bit about myself first. Uh, I'm a, a paper artist, so I work a lot with paper. Uh, mm -hmm. It's my medium of choice. Uh, my wife is also a paper maker, so we have a lot of paper <laughs> in our life. Um, and I focus on uh, tessellations, which are geometric patterns that repeat endlessly, like uh, all of the artwork that we are here to study. And uh, I have written a, a book on this topic some years ago now, which is this. You can see we have nice patterns <laughs> that go together. Uh, and so that really... Um, led me to doing more and more of this as I've continued to explore this art form and the, the connections between um, the study of geometry and where, where that goes. And any time that you start making geometric art, uh, you will be led towards uh, all of the study done in the Islamic world for patterns because there's no one who has a better knowledge of this. And so I did not intend to study this in, <laughs> in my life, but it happened because of this. So, uh, I'm uh, interested in origami. So when you think of origami, this is probably what you're thinking of, like, you know, things that we make. Um, but the things I make are more like this, uh, which are all folded by hand from one sheet of paper with no cuts and no glue. And uh, this is made using um, a triangle grid all folded, and then the pattern fits within that framework, which is something that we saw from Amit during his presentation on Monday. Uh, it looked very familiar to me. <laughs> so I'll talk a little bit about uh, some work here. Pretty much everything that I do, or at least in the context of what we're discussing here today, is on two types of grids. One of those is squares, and the other, the isometric grid. Um, the reason we use these two things is they're the only shapes which tile together infinitely uh, with no gaps between. And so uh, when we're making shapes, to, to folding shapes to fit in, we have different rules than when you're drawing with uh, pen and paper. And so this is a, it gives us a framework to fold things and to make shapes and structures. Some examples. Some examples that are not the examples I wanted. Okay, it's fine. Uh, these are all things made with the isometric grid. Actually, hold on one second. So here's some, some things made with the triangle grid that are all inspired from patterns in uh, Islamic uh, art and ornament. Uh, many of these have hundreds and hundreds of folds to create. And we make them, the kind of language that we use when we are making this art, are things like this. This is uh, instructions for how it is folded on that grid. So um, here, for example, you can see there's a square grid and we have some lines on here. And this informs us where to fold the paper to make a structure. Does that make sense? Lines, fold on the lines. <laughs> so 
Uh, I just want to show you when we talk about folding this, oh, there we go. This is me folding a triangle grid. It's about one minute. Speed it up 20 times. <laughs> but this is also a big sheet of paper that was one, is one meter by 70 centimeters, and it's a very thick paper. So uh, I was folding it much slower because it's important to be accurate. And the same when you, when you are making a pattern with uh, ruler and compass, the first things you make must be precise because if you start with bad geometry, it, everything is bad. And the same is true when we fold, your first lines must be as perfect as they can be because that creates the rest of the universe that you are making in, in the folded shapes. Actually, hurts to watch me <laughs> But, uh, so I, I'm folding this three different ways, dividing the paper up to make triangles. Uh, in our work, um, Here's just a little example. Uh, this is a sheet of paper that my wife made, which is two and a half meters by one meter. Um, and we fold it the same way, dividing it up to make a grid of triangles. Um, my wife would be angry if she knew I had this photo in here. <laughs> uh, and this is the finished piece. Um, which she made, actually, uh, has seven types of gold leaf applied and is about this wide by this. So it's a very simple pattern, but because we are making this repeated form and structure, it, it takes on uh, an interesting purpose. Uh, here's a few things folded with squares. They were supposed to be earlier next to my squares. They moved somehow. But this is a square grid. You can see uh, where the lines would be. And we've made these shapes that are twisted to fit within that, within that form. So it's actually very simple. But because of the repeating shape, we also get, uh, we get another tessellation here, which is the, these squares with the triangles in between, which is a very famous and well-known pattern. Some squares. Uh, this is a kind of um, octagon and square pattern, which is also formed on the square grid, but uh, you can see we get many layers of pattern put together to get, uh, to get this. Oh yes, everything here is one, one sheet of paper, no cuts, all, just all one, always one piece. Um, it's a little bit like uh, religion for me. <laughs> so, and uh, just like everything that we're drawing here, uh, we are creating a set of rules for ourselves. You know, we don't need to do this, but it gives us a limitation to work inside and that allows us to be creative within a, a set of limitations. This is something, uh, this, this is a joke. Uh, <laughs> So I do a lot of research on this, uh, this crazy kind of folding. And there's this um, a Dutch man who lived some years ago who folded many, many crazy little tiny patterns. You know, this, this big folded 200 times this, this small. Um, so I went to go do research on this man's work in the, uh, the Royal Library in, uh, in the Netherlands. And this man also had these glasses he made for himself so he could see the world through square grids. <laughs> and he would wear these uh, as a joke, but, but a lot. Um, so I like to think about this sometimes and when I feel I'm doing too much folding, I stop so that I am not like this man. I have some more patterns. Uh, these are, again, it, it's a triangular grid, it's a very simple pattern, but uh, this is one side of the piece, this is the other side. So there are two sides to this. Which what? Big 
you know, each one of these has two sides and they have different patterns. Here's another example. Uh, this is uh, folded from some handmade Japanese paper. And so one of the things about this type of pattern we like is you can put light behind it and you see the shadows inside, which uh, is called the uh, hira ori, it means shadow folds. So this is the one side, this is the other side. And they look different. So one of the very nice things in making kind of Islamic patterns with the folded paper is you get this, this two-sided nature. And in fact, what's also interesting about this is with all of these types of folds, uh, each tessellation has an opposite. It's called a dual. Uh, and that is the, the, it's, I don't really know how to describe a dual. I don't, how would I describe a dual tessellation? A dual. You know, like uh, each tessellation has its dual, has its opposite. Oh, it's, it's like a sister. Dual yeah, it's like a sister or a brother. It's like a twin, in, an evil twin, maybe. <laughs> but uh, we see this when we fold these patterns, we get both. One, one side is one, one side is the other. So this I like. Uh, here's a pattern which is three-dimensional, which I actually have here to, to share with you. So, uh, I folded all of these things, folding paper going along, and uh, I started running out of ideas because uh, it became very limiting. And I started looking for more information about patterns in the world to try to understand. And I, I, I live in the United States, so I, there's not a lot of information about uh, Islamic art that we learn about in school. <laughs> and uh, I discovered... Um, I discovered this information about all of this tiling and the more that I researched into it, the more that I learned there was this entire universe of patterns to draw from and to, to learn from. Uh, so I started finding examples and going through and recreating the same patterns I would see here folded out of paper. Uh, and as I went along I realized many of the examples like this book was the Grammar of Ornament from Owen Jones, which is really kind of a travesty <laughs> in that he didn't recreate many of the tilings very well. Um, so one of my favorite books that I found since is this, um, which you may or may not agree with as being a, being a good book or not. But uh, I learned a lot from this. This is a, a, a book written by this man about um, the traditional way that these patterns were generated by craftsmen uh, in the old days. And what was most informative about this was um, how to make shortcuts, which I realize is not pure <laughs> for those who are drawing these with precision, but, but because they used a lot of these grids to make their work, uh, they, would, they would find ways to make it be almost perfect but, but not quite, but close enough that no one would notice. And it made it easier for them. And in turn, using those same techniques made it easier for me. <laughs> so um, I have drawn upon a lot of these very traditional methods to uh, learn how to fold things better. And that led to more complex work with more layers of tiling. So this is actually, a, there's a hexagon with squares in between and then triangles in between those. It is a very uh, common tiling. But um, using some of these methods taught me how to actually make this and fold it correctly. And then as I went on, I became very interested in these rosette patterns, which are uh, very beautiful. So I have some of these to show. The nice thing when folding paper, uh, octagons are very easy to make. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like to use this. Uh, this is from a, a piece of handmade paper. And so very often when, when people fold paper, they must use the edges of the paper to make the geometry. But when I fold these things, I actually use the, the lines that we make in folding to, to create the structure. So um, just like if you're drawing 
uh, things, circles, you, you use that first circle to generate everything. So I do the same, I, I make the creases and that, that generates all of the structure. So there's no edge to this, it's just, you know, crazy. But it's still possible to make a rigid uh, pattern from this. So more of the same thing. <laughs> I folded one out of uh, money. <laughs> Very, uh, so this is a good example of um, approximating a pattern to get the structure. So uh, these are not perfect uh, pentagons, but it's very, uh, very easy to make this, this famous traditional pattern, folding this out of paper uh, on a square grid, if you use some of this knowledge about approximating shapes. And then many of these designs uh, you can do recursion, so you go smaller into the center, which is a common feature uh, also in making, you know, if you're making a rosette, you can use that to then go inside and then go inside and go inside. Maybe you work from the inside out, but <laughs> in, in my world we work from the outside in. So This is a pattern I like very much. This is one side, this is the other side. These are the same the same pattern but reversed. So I have, I have more slides to show and walk through, but I, I would like to actually pass around some things for you to look at because they're here, so why not? This is the same piece as this. So, and what I would ask is uh, also look at it against the light, see the pattern. Here's another, uh, it's a 12-sided rotational, I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> star, yes, it's a star, there we go. Uh, hold, make sure you hold it up and look at it against the light and see the, the difference. Here's a folded structure. I have more examples of this, but this is what it's like unfolded uh, with construction lines and the, the, the folding lines on it. Um, this is sort of an octagonal, it's a small piece of a larger pattern, which is, has octagons uh, and four pointed stars and they, they all mesh together. So, All of these are folded from one sheet of paper with no cuts. All of these examples have inspiration from Islamic geometry or are direct copies of something. Some of these papers are handmade papers that uh, my wife uh, made. The ones that, that don't look like a machine made it. <laughs> I'd also like to just point out, if you're taking pictures of things, this is my Instagram account. If you at all want to reference me, please feel free. And uh, this is the hashtag for the Istanbul Design Center. Just some more examples to show you that I did not bring. Um, this is some three-dimensional ornamentation. More structures. This is a pattern which is very important to me. Uh, this is the first of these, these types of patterns I ever folded, is this. It's just uh, hexagons around and around and around. And we, so we made one where we, uh, these are plaster casts. And then this is a gold leaf. So we made a project where we took many of them and covered them with gold. Um, also, my, my wedding ring is this same pattern, <laughs> which we had made. Uh, where we, we made them uh, with a goldsmith. So, if you want to see that later, I'm quite proud of this because uh, my fingers are very big, so my ring was easy to make. My wife's fingers are very small, so hers are very tiny. But, uh, 
a lot can be done with these patterns. And so here's, uh, I'm going to show you some more examples that are more complex. Um, as more people are doing these things, this is a, a, a student of mine. And he made this uh, similar to this, um, it's the same idea. It's a, just a folded structure that takes on some dimensionality to the surface. But uh, it looks very beautiful because of the shadows and the, the form it makes. This does not do this justice. I, I love this. This is work by uh, a Ukrainian artist. And he is making these uh, rosettes out of the same paper I'm using here, but uh, he uses a machine so it can curve. And it makes these beautiful curved shapes that are just uh, uh, wonderful. So uh, I'm working on a new book for next year and featuring many of his works because they're, they're, they're lovely. But it is using uh, the Islamic geometry to create these patterns. There is no grid. No, no, because he cheated. <laughs> he used a computer. <laughs> With a design software and a machine that can uh, make lines in the paper to fold. Um, I also, I also, no, no hands, no, 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 lazy, the lazy way, yes. Uh, I also do this. <laughs> uh, I have a laser, a laser cutter that will cut things. So, for example, this one is uh, made with a laser. So there's no f folding, no grid. Uh, it's just the shapes. Uh, I use a laser cutter called uh, Glowforge, uh, which is a new brand of laser cutter, which I like very much because it's very easy to use. Uh, I like easy. <laughs> this is hard enough. I don't need that to also be hard. So, so we use a laser to make uh, many other projects that we do. But for this, I like to use my hands. All of these things I make with with the exceptions of some of these to play with. Uh, I, I only use my hands, I don't use a ruler, I don't use a tool to fold the line, I only use my fingers. Uh, and, and that's my rule for me. Uh, it does not have to be a rule for you. <laughs> but um, because, uh, because it's easy to use a computer to make things or to do things, I like to be engaged with the work and only use my hands so that there is a, a connection between me and what I am doing. So maybe it is not perfect, but it is mine and it is something I have made. And, and you have a tangible object, you know, a thing you can hold when you are done. You can say, I made this. It is not the same as, oh, print, 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 you know? So I, I like this limitation for me. Um, Here's some crazy examples. This, this, some thousands, thousands of lines in here. This is a, an, another student of mine who is making very elaborate patterns from, uh, f from the, the Islamic uh, history. So it's hard to see here because it's so busy. But different types of patterns, big uh, rotational twist. So all of this draws on the same information about form and structure. Uh, here's a very traditional looking piece uh, from a friend of mine who makes these same sorts of things. Uh, this one is made from silk. So if, if you are interested, the same technique is very easy to do with fabric. And there is a, a wonderful book about this from a friend of mine who I'm going to write on the board because he would like it if I did this. <laughs> it's called Shadow Folds. And it's by an artist named Chris Palmer. And it is made by uh, taking a pattern and making little stitches uh, in the fabric and it makes it all come together like this. This one's, this one's difficult, but, <laughs> but he, has a, he has a wonderful book about how to make this, 
which uh, if you are interested to make this from fabric. Here's another one also made from silk. And Yes, so every, every point where the, for us with paper we would fold, but instead with the fabric you can make a little a stitch and bring the fabric together and then you fold it and make the, with the iron to make it flat. So um, I find this very hard because <laughs> I'm not good with the needle, but it, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting. So that's about as hard as it gets. <laughs> so I want to talk very briefly just about um, something that, that, that I also like, which is part of what I do. And it's not really about geometry, but just to, to cover it, it's about paper making. So uh, when I first started doing this, I was buying paper and making things. And uh, paper is a medium, just like anything else. And so there's good paper and there's bad paper. And um, I did not know the difference, <laughs> but as I have gone along, I have learned what, what makes paper good and what is nice about uh, paper and, and what sort of things I want. And so uh, my wife will make paper for projects that we want to do and she will make it to the size that we need and the kind of how it should feel, which is a very nice thing. <laughs> But uh, this is the piece of paper that she made, which uh, if you felt it, it, it feels like heavy leather. It's very strong. It's made from uh, linen, you know, like uh, clothes. <coughs> so this is a little bit about this process. It's very messy. <laughs> so <laughs> these are big buckets of uh, paper pulp. It's, it's uh, smashed in a machine. So it looks like this little fibers of things in a big vat. This is a, a big machine that we use to smash paper, f to ma make paper fiber. So it goes in these, uh, these big vats and there is a frame like, uh, like a screen for a window. And we put it in and pull it out and the, the paper pulp is on it like a sticks to the screen and then you can make sheets of paper out of this. So it's it's a very old process. Uh, this is a very big sheet of paper that we made with some dye. It's my little brother. <laughs> we, we made a big frame to make a large piece of paper which was uh, three meters by three meters, which is a huge piece. So to pour, it was uh, many hundreds of liters of water with pulp onto this sheet. Um, and that made this big piece of paper, which is a hexagon. And it is about, about two and a half meters across. So uh, we folded it <laughs> into these things. So it is now this, but this piece is, is about the size of here to here. So big, big piece. Um, which is on an uh, exhibition right now in a museum in America. How long did it take you to fold it? Too long. Uh, this picture is in the United States. This picture is in London. <laughs> so so uh, it took some time between here and here. Uh, this. This is what paper looks like when it dries. We're drying it like this. Anyway, that's enough slides. So I think now we can, well, first, uh, if you have any questions about any of this, now is a good time to ask before we move on to folding things. I wanted to ask about how you pr preserve what you do and how you exhibit them because... Um, because paper. Yeah, the nature of paper is very... Yes, um, I have this conversation a lot. Um, the first thing I would like to say is uh, we as a human civilization have spent more time uh, building things to preserve paper than any other thing and that's libraries and so uh, paper can last a very long time so there's a lot of conversation about 
how paper is ephemeral, it doesn't last forever. But um, you know, as we learned with other things like buildings, that also does not last. So you know, everything falls apart in the end. Uh, as far as preserving things, we use paper which is acid-free. So it does not have, uh, you know, the normal paper you buy to print is, is, um, will, will fall apart after some years. It will turn yellow and start to become crumbly. Um, the paper that we will be folding with today is not. It's acid-free. And the same if you have drawing paper or things like this, it's meant to last a long time. And that keeps it from, from dissolving itself. Uh, as far as keeping it goes, um, <laughs> these have been poorly treated <laughs> by, by traveling a, a bit, but uh, we have places where we store it, uh, big drawers to keep it in our, in our studio. And when we exhibit things, quite often we are making large pieces and we are uh, mounting them uh, on a wall or something like this. Uh, right now, uh, we have some work in an exhibition in America, including this, this big one I just showed. And I have one I made, which is, um, uh, it's 25 meters long, um, which is a folded pattern, which was many, many thousands of folds. And uh, I will never do again, but. <laughs> <laughs> the paper was, was uh, 42 meters long. And then when it's done, when it's finished, it is 25 meters. And it is a, like a long snake kind of thing. Anyway. Was it only one sheet? Yes, yes, yes. Big, big, long piece of paper. Um, but, you know, for these things, we, we, we keep them. And if you exhibit them in a museum, they have means to keep these. Um, you know, uh, the important thing is not to crush them. <laughs> But uh, a lot of this is it's really about um, some of these aren't meant to last. Some of them are. Uh, much of this is like an exercise for, for your mind. So if you want to keep them, you can keep them. If it's important, you can keep it. If it's not important, it, it gets recycled. These are wonderful works of art. I really like them. But how about their daily use? Um, how can we use them in terms of... That's a good question. <laughs> uh, but really, almost everything that we're doing here doesn't have a practical purpose. So why have any ornamentation in life at all? Uh, we could just live in a concrete box and have you know, nothing. But uh, we like to make things that are beautiful because they uh, uh, make us happy and fulfill our soul in some way. So for different people, this is different things. Um, for me, I find this very satisfying and interesting to do. Um, you know, a lot of the, what I do with this, I, I'm interested in, in Islamic art for the patterns and the, the geometry. But a lot of what I also do, I, I, I work with um, scientists and researchers to make folding structures and other things. Um, so two weeks ago, I was working at a university doing this, teaching a course about that. So um, the knowledge of this is very useful in many ways. Uh, for this, it's, this is really purely uh, exploration of this geometry as uh, for the sake of geometry. Um, so does it have a purpose? You know, it, maybe not directly, but the knowledge is important. And so it has uh, value. So um, I, I, I like it for that reason. So. How many years have you been involved in this? 2005. Uh, so there's a, little, there's a little story for this. Um, I work in uh, technology. I worked for a large um, bank. And they are not nice people. <laughs> so I had a job that was very stressful and I really didn't like it. And all I did all day was uh, not, nothing, not making anything, just fixing things that break. And uh, I thought, what did I do when I was young that I enjoyed to do with my hands? Some, something else. And when I was very small, I liked to fold origami. So uh, I started to try this again, and it was very bad, very, very bad. 
but uh, I started to, I, for some reason, I was folding little patterns that repeated, and I found that very interesting. So I started doing a bit more of this and more of this, and ex seeing what shapes I could make. Uh, with no knowledge of geometry whatsoever, I had forgotten all of this, and so I made many horrible things. <laughs> but um, I made some things that were good, and I started posting photos of this to the internet and sharing the information about these strange things I was making and how to make them, and that created a community of people, and we started discovering more and more of how, what could be made, and uh, that led to making a book about this, which led to more people being involved, and then led to me traveling a lot and teaching about this, and it's really just kept, uh, we would say snowballing, because it gets bigger and bigger. I live in a place with lots of snow. <laughs> uh, but it's really, um, you know, it was just a simple exploration of this to, to use my hands and my mind without uh, technology uh, that led me to do this. And uh, it's been enormously gratifying for me and my life. Um, it's led me to go all around the world to teach to people and meet new people. Um, it's how I met my wife, which was also nice. <laughs> was good. Uh, yeah, it's been a very enriching thing. Ah. So, yeah, yes. Uh, it's a good reason to write a book. <laughs> How many patterns did you come up with? Uh, have you really counted? Do you, can you give us an approximate number? So I'm talking about your unique designs, not the repetitions of the works that you've done. Hundreds? Hun uh, yeah, m many hundred. I don't know how many. Um, when I started doing this, no nobody else was making these kinds of patterns folding from paper. So most everything that I have made is something new. Um, uh, even when I'm looking at some existing pattern, to recreate it in paper, it's not the same. So, um, but really the geometry is, is simple. So. I don't really think of them as mine, or my designs, because anyone else who is exploring this you know, space would find these also. And so um, sometimes we see this where I, I, I meet someone who has made something which they also discovered the, the, the same thing, and it's very normal. Uh, so really now I, I don't think of them as being mine at all, but as belonging to kind of the universe, because geometry is geometry. But yeah, I mean, I only like to make things which are coming from my own head, so. Do we all have a square of paper? Yes? We do not need any instructions for what we're doing. I'm just going to show you, so it's okay. All right? So, uh, we're going to, we're just going to do some, a little geometry here to show how things can be made with uh, folding and a square. Um, and what we're doing, we're not actually making anything, but the geometry we're going to make for this is the same as this. Uh, so we're going to make an octagon, octagon stars inside, inside, inside. This is just a little exercise. Okay, so first I want you to take your square and hold it like a di uh, diamond. We're going to fold one corner to the other corner and make them line up very well. So we make a diagonal fold all the way down. I'm holding mine up in the air, but you can do yours on the table. It's easy to do on a flat surface. So we're making a nice, a nice crease here. So we have, are we happy? Is it good? All right. Now, the next step, we're going to take one of the flaps. We're going to fold it so it is along the edge, which is very hard for me to do holding up in the air and showing you like this. But we're, we're going to fold it. Well, then I try to make mine look. Okay, so it looks like like this. 
Okay, so you have this side. Turn it over. And we do the same thing on the other side. So they match. It's like making a paper airplane, but more precise. <laughs> so once you have that, open it up. So we now have this shape. Yes? And so then, uh, let's turn it around so it looks like, uh, like an ice cream cone. <clears throat> now we're going to do the same thing in the other direction. So you can make it close like this again. So we have these lines coming up. We'll do that same process where we fold it over. There's Yes, so I have it I have it like this. Yeah. And I'm going to fold this over the same kind of way. Okay, and we will do that same thing on the other side as well. Just the, just like we did before. Once you have that, we're going to turn it 90 degrees. We're going to pretend that these lines aren't there. We're going to do the same thing again, where we fold the point to the point. So we have this again. Now we're going to do the same process on, in both directions, on both sides, like we just did. Where we, we've, we're going to fold this over, the same as we were just doing. We're going to fold the same process, like last time. Did, we, did you do that in both directions? So if you have folded it all, if you open it up, and now if you look on the inside, you can see there is an octagon in the center. And around the octagon, there is a, an octagonal star. And then around that, there are uh, kites around the edges. So just by making simple folds with this, we create a complex geometry and to make this with the, the ruler and compass to draw would take a long time, but it's very easy like this. So, so uh, I, I like this method. <laughs> so we're going to build on this and make uh, some more structure inside. So the next step here, hold it like a square, and we're going to fold it in half. So we fold it in half and make sure that all of your lines are meeting in the center of the paper. Um, hopefully, hopefully they do, but uh, that's important. Once you have this, once you have it in half, open it. We rotate it 90 degrees and make it in the other direction. Make a cross in the middle. Here's where it gets more difficult. <laughs> there, there are two points that we're going to use as a reference. So we've made this structure and we're going to fold using these existing things as a reference point. So on your octagon, and it would be good if you use a, a pencil or something to mark, uh, mark on your paper. There are two points at the the, the top of the octagon, you know, there, there are two points uh, across from each other. Show sure. two points. Uh, let me find a... Hold on one moment. So there are these two points here. Just mark those. And we are going to fold a line. So th this is one of the things about folding is that because we have a straight line going up and down, it's, it's easy for us to make a, a perfectly perpendicular line because we can fold this line onto itself. Does that make sense? So if I fold this paper over, it's easier, it's easier for you if you fold it backwards, but I, I'll show you like this. 
I'm going to fold the paper over on those two points. So hold, hold, you want to hold it so that you can see the points when you're folding, <laughs> when you're folding it. You're going to fold it so it touch goes, the line goes through those two points, and then this line touches itself. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. That we're, we're using the geometry to line up with itself. It's no pro if you did not go all the way across and you made a smaller line, it's good, it's good practice. It means that you're, you're better at folding. So it's all right, it's good. <laughs> but we want this to be all the way across this time. Uh, and we are using these lines to match up rather than the edges because uh, we are using these lines to construct the piece. And so we're doing it the hard way. <laughs> All right, so you made this, uh, this piece. We folded it over for these lines. I want you to do the same thing for each of the other sides. Yeah? Find those two spots and fold over the line. We're going to take your paper, rotate it so it's a diamond. All right. Now, we're going to find the same the two spots, just like before. They're going to be on opposite corners here. It's the, the same thing that we just did, but we've rotated to the other sides of the octagon. But there's a shortcut that we have. If you look on the, on the back side of the paper, if you flip it over, you will see where these lines cross there is a, a point where we can just fold, fold the tip to the square. I'll come around and show you. Folded all four of those. So now if you look at your paper, there's a lot more creases, but you can see now there is a, a new octagon in the center and a new octagonal star around it and then kites that go all the way around that, which fit perfectly inside this sheet of paper. So it makes a perfect uh, star inside the sheet. So with the same process, you can continue to fold the, the same uh, way of connecting the two points across. You can make smaller and smaller and smaller stars into the center, which we're not going to do. <laughs> But you can do this process, each, each lines you add, it creates more pattern and more structure and it becomes very beautiful. And so it's possible then to, you can do things like, uh, you can color in pieces of it, or you can fold it along the star shapes, which is what I did to make this. It makes this the same structure. Uh, the only difference with this one, uh, I did not fold all of the lines, but just some of the pieces. So, uh, it's, it's actually fairly simple, but this is a, a, a very easy way of generating a complicated geometry. So if Amit wanted to draw this, he would spend a long time making many circles and little marks and things, but instead we've done this in a fairly short period of time. Don't, don't tell them it's easier your way, That's, that doesn't help me. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna set that aside. Now we're going to make something. Uh, I'm going to hand out some paper. So we're going to fold a hexagon of paper. We're, we're going to make something more than this, but this is just to show you even when we fold the most simplest structure, we get, uh, yes, yes, so 